Vendor request forms are a key part of managing inventory, supply chains, and procurements, specifically when it comes to registering new suppliers. However, this can often create a lot of administrative work for logistics and finance teams alike. In particular, handling vendor requests manually or with pen and paper can lead to excessive data entry, administrative tasks, and data validation problems. Hi, I'm Kevin from BuddyBase. And I'd like to show you today how you can use BuddyBase to digitize your vendor request forms. Once you've shared your form with your potential vendors, they fill it in and the data is added to your database ready for you to do something with. By the end of this video, you'll have a multi-step form that you can embed anywhere on your website. Let's dive in. So this is the form we're going to be building. Our new vendor will add their company name and their category, their address, They'll add their contact details, their service description, an EIN number, and whether or not they want to purchase order building. And once they've done that, our form will be submitted. That data will then be available in our database, and we will be able to contact that supplier when we need to use their services. Let's dive in with building that. As always, we start on the BuddyBase portal. I'm going to click on Create New Application and Start from Scratch. I'll call this my vendor form and create application. With BuddyBase, everything starts from the data. So if you already have a database where you're collecting these vendor details, you can connect to that directly. If it's a relational database, a non-relational database, or even a spreadsheet product like Google Sheets or Airtable. Alternatively, you can use our internal database to create a new table, which is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to create a new table, and I'm going to call it vendors. Now, I've been collecting these vendor requests over time, so I'm going to upload my CSV file that I've created to include these. And BuddyBase will have a look at each of the fields and try to turn them into the right data type. If you disagree with any of them, you can switch over to a different data type and you can choose the display column. I'm going to use the company name as the display column and press create. If you don't have any data, you could create a new table, maybe called vendor requests. And you could individually add the columns that you want. So maybe we'd have company name, and then we'd start adding each of the columns that's there. But if, like I do, you already have an existing data source, you can use that to form your table, which is pretty cool. Once we have the data, we can go to our design tab. And I'm going to use a blank screen to create my new form. And it's going to be my sign up page. Inside of the sign up page, I'm going to add a container and place a headline inside of my container. It's gonna be centered, and we'll call it our new vendor request. And my new vendor request, I'm gonna use a form. So create a form, and I'll tell my container to keep everything near the middle, both horizontally and vertically. And inside of my form, I'm going to add some form fields. So I'll use a field group like this. And I check my form and I say, look, I want to create not a custom schema, but from the vendors table. And you can see it gives me a field for every column in my table. Now I can see I want this to be a bit wider, so I'll go set the width to be um, 75%. Looks a bit nicer. And I can just start deleting rows I don't want. So I want all of these other fields, but this form is pretty overwhelming at the moment. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to split it into a multi-form field. So to do that, inside of my field group, I'm going to add a form step like that. And inside of my form step, I'm going to bring the first two fields, company name and category. I'll add in a second step. So form step two is going to be made up of my street address, my street address line two, zip code, and the state. So step one will be the details about the company, its category, maybe in the other order. Step two will be the address of the company. Step three will be the contact details for the vendor team. So we'll need to contact first name, last name, email, and phone number. And the last step we're going to have, so step four, is going to be our services description, our purchase order billing, and our EIN number. So now we can see the steps are much tidier, got a much tidier form going on here. 
Um, maybe I'll align this to the top rather than have it shift around so much. So in step one, let me just rename some things going on here. So the field name's fine, but actually it looks pretty ugly. So we'll just change this to be company name and change that to be label and the placeholder. Equally for category, we'll leave the field alone because that's going to our database and we'll capitalize everything else. Now, when the user's here, we want them to be able to click a button that's going to move them to the next form step. So I'm going to add, that's my category, I want to add a container. And inside this container, I want to add a button. I'll give my container a little bit of padding at the top, 12 pixels, and I'll align everything to the right-hand side right now. I think the button should be over there. I'll style the button, maybe make it um, an action button. And the action I want to happen is I want to change the form step. So I want to change form step. Which form do I want to change? The new form. And which step? The next step. Brilliant. So now when someone fills in their company name and category, they'll click on the new button, which will make say next, and I'll bring them to the next stop. So at this point, we're going to need our buttons again. So I'll copy that container and paste it inside of this step. So that's going to be fine. But I also want the ability to go back again to the previous step in case I've changed my mind. So if I just call this my next button so I can find it, I'm going to add in another button, bring it inside of that container. We'll say this is going to be previous button, previous. It's action then is going to change the form step of our new form to the previous step. And for the container, we'll make it horizontal rather than vertical. And we now have this previous and next step. Okay. Step three, we're going to do exactly the same thing. So we'll change the field names. For any of these fields, we can click and we can add validation. So I might say, actually, you have to have a contact first name, in which case I can add a validation rule. And the constraint I'm going to say is required. And I'll say, um, must have first name. Okay, so you can set custom validation for any of these fields. We'll need the same buttons in step three as we have in step two. And now we're into step four. Services description, we probably want this to be a longer field description. So I'm going to replace that component. So if I remove that component, I can add in a long form field. Bring it up here. Tell them it's going to be for the services description field and give the label of services description. We'll set up the um, EIN number, this field, and any other details that you require, you can set your form up to be. So purchase order billing is actually going to be a Boolean. So we'll add a little checkbox in here. Um, checkbox. Because we're using the schema for our form and we haven't said that this is a Boolean value, we can't select the field over here. So I'm going to go back to my data layer in my vendors form. I'll find that purchase order billing. So this column was important as a text column and we can't switch that over to a Boolean directly. So I'm going to delete this column and to do that, I'll just type in the name of the field or copy it from the description and I'll add it back in again. I'll call it purchase order billing. And the data type I want to set this to is Boolean. So back in my design tab, my checkbox can now be assigned to purchase order billing. And I'll set that up, purchase order billing. Okay. We're going to need our buttons again. This time though, we our next button shouldn't say next. It should say save or submit or do something like that. And its action is going to be slightly different. We we're going to want it to save a row. To, from our new form to our vendors table. And although our form has been submitted, we can still use the next step in a form to present our thank you message. So I'm still going to have a new form next step here. So I'll add a last step, step five. And inside of this step, even though it's a form step, it's not really good use for the form. It's just for our thank you message. So I'll add a paragraph. And I'll say, thank you for getting in touch. We'll reach out soon. 
I'm going to put that paragraph in a container and then use my container to center the text like that. Awesome. Now I can publish this page, vendor form, and I can either share it directly with or without this nav, or I can embed it into a page using an iframe. So to get rid of the nav, I'll just click on the navigation here and I'll turn off show nav on this screen. It moves this quite close to the top here. So what I might do then is go to this container and give it a top margin of say 32 pixels, give it a bit of space. So now we've got a form that collects all the data from our new supplier without us having to give them a form and type it into the computer ourselves. Our data is automatically added to the database and we can use the automation layer to email us when a new person has been added. So we go to create automation, the automation tab, rule created, we'll say new supplier and save. I'm gonna say from the vendors table, send an email. And I'll maybe send this to admin at company.com, send it from our um, form at company.com, I'll just say new vendor. This lightning bolt also allows us to use the row itself. So we could say row.company name has requested to be a supplier. So we'll finish and test that. So in our new table of vendors, we'll say company name, um, my cool company. We'll test that, see the email is sent. We get an idea of what it says. It's being sent here, subject is a new vendor, and we can see this company has requested to be a supplier. So there we go. We've digitized the process of collecting data from our new suppliers, emailing whoever needs to know, and removing any manual data entry or pen and paper from this stage of the process. With BuddyBase, you could automate or digitize any other stage of your admin process as well. Hopefully this has given you some ideas. We'd love to see what you build. See you next time. Bye.